Welcome to all of you. My name is Anupam Gautam, and I'm currently working as a PhD research scholar at Max Planck Institute for Biology and University of Tübingen under the supervision of Professor Daniel Schusen. And today I'm going to present on the topic of using NO3 to get more assignment faster in diamond plus megan microbiome analysis. So what is microbiome? Microbiome is basically the community of microorganisms living in a particular environment. Uh, mostly comprises of bacteria, archaea, viruses, fungi, etc. And one way to study microbiome is by using metagenomics, where you sequence and study the genetic information of uh, your environment sample or the sample of your interest. And what metagenomic analysis can help you with? It can help you to answer two major questions, like what organisms are present in a sample and what functional potential do these organisms hold? One way to carry out metagenomic analysis is by using diamond plus megan approach. Over here, you take your raw sequence read, align them against a protein reference database like NCBI NR by using diamond, and then bin those alignment into functional and taxonomical categories by using DAA megan as a tool of megan. And ultimately, you can carry out lots of analysis by using megan graphical user interface. This is one of the most widely used approach. Uh, the default database for this pipeline currently is NCBI-NR, and it is suitable for both long and short read and can help you to do both taxonomical and functional meaning. So this is, uh, till now, I think this is the only approach uh, which um, has a graphical user interface based platform where you, you just upload your data and can do analysis by just uh, clicking um, buttons in the menu bar. So it's quite user friendly. So what's the concern with current approach? Like when we started this project uh, in 2021, so uh, like the NCBI NR at that time used to have around 420 million protein entries. Uh, out of them only around 213 million belong to bacteria or archaea. Also like uh, NCBI NR taxonomy is not explicitly not not designed for microbial based metagenomics and also like uh, this NC NCBNR is not um, strictly designed for microbial based metagenomic analysis. So what could be the suitable alternative? Uh, GTDB like uh, it's specifically designed for taxonomical analysis of microbiome and NO3 basically provide functional notation of genomes present in GTDB database. So, so we raise an initial question like is NO3 a suitable alternative for NCBI NR um, for microbiome analysis when you are using diamond plus megan approach? So uh, our uh, alumni like Jana Bakshi and uh, one of our master student Henrik started looking into this. So what we did, like we generated the required NO3 files, uh, the FAST and the SQL like, which will be needed by diamond plus megan pipeline. We took 10 data set and carried out diamond plus megan run against all these 10 data set. Uh, whenever we use NCBI NR based file, we call that run as NCBI NR run. Whenever we used an NO3 based file, we call that run as NO3 run. And ultimately carried out comparison of these runs based on quantitative matrices, like number of read aligned and assigned. Qualitative matrices, like how similar the taxonomical and function binning was. And finally, runtime analysis, like how fast these runs were. So these are the 10 data set which we use. Uh, there are nine short read and one long read. We also use a, uh, one mock community data set, MBAC26, which comprises of 23 bacterial strains and three archaeal strains. Uh, the data set range from different environments, so like reverse seagrass in skin and stool. And uh, like um, the last column of the table basically shows you the number of reads present in each data set. They're from different sequencing platforms and also have different layouts. Finally, the, the last data set, Bioreact 3 over here, is the long read data set. So these are the database statistics. Um, as you can see, like the uh, NO3 has uh, four times uh, lesser protein as compared to NCBI NR database. And uh, like uh, you can see, like a uh, number of bacterial uh, protein is uh, twice bacteria and archaeal proteins is twice less than like NCBI NR. And over here, we shows you the ratio of different uh, like um, annotations. Like, uh, so these are the protein entries. And when you align against them, so your read get aligns to these uh, excision or these protein IDs. 
so how many of these protein ids has corresponding mapping in ncbi taxonomy or gtb taxonomy and like uh, similar for the functional taxonomy like functional categories like keg seed eggnog etc so this basically shows you the ratio of each accession having an uh, annotation uh, in annotary and belonging to these different classifications so as you can see like uh, uh, and are uh, like um, have higher uh, annotation categories for its protein um, in majority of cases but like it it also have higher number of protein entries present in it so for the mock community run uh, we can see like uh, uh, both uh, like uh, annotary runs and ncbi nr run have a similar trend when when you look at uh, when you compare it with the true mock so like uh, both the runs were able to detect uh, uh, more ma majority of uh, mocks uh, bacterial and archaeal strains with some false positive so then we carried out diamond runs against both the databases and uh, like one time by using uh, annotary and one time by using ncbi nr and these are the alignment statistics for each sample uh, one thing you can see like the alignment ratios uh, which has been calculated by dividing uh, annotary run by ncbi nr runs is always near to one so it shows like even with a smaller database diamond was able to align similar number of reads and as you can see like uh, uh, over here it's uh, uh, in total like uh, so diamond was able to align more than 300 million reads against uh, uh, in, against uh, no3 database and uh, around 301 million reads against uh, ncbi database so in general diamond was able to align 2% uh, more read uh, against uh, no3 database and when we look at uh, when we look at the correlations uh, of the reads total number of reads aligned by diamond for each sample against no3 database with respect to total number of reads aligned by diamond again ncbi nr database so it's always uh, like raw value is near is equal to one so even with smaller database diamond is a similar number of reads for this plot on x axis you have no3 and on y axis you have ncbi uh, nr uh, aligned reads and so raw value is always one. So we can say like uh, annotary run perform as well, if not slightly better than NCBI and R. Uh, then we took those uh, alignments and used Megan to bend those alignments into functional and taxonomical categories. And as you can see, like uh, again, uh, these are the total number of read assigned by Megan to the respective classification, like NCBI and R taxon ncbi and our taxonomy or ncbi taxonomy basically or gtb taxonomy and functional categories like ec eggnog interpro keg and seed you can see like a uh, ratio is always near to one and these are the total number of reads like total number of reads present in all the samples uh, like how many of the total number of reads uh, summing all the samples got assigned to these categories um so one like it's always near to one so like Di megan is basically an uh, assigning similar number of reads uh, but for some category, Megan was able to assign more reads uh, when you are using annotary based file, like for GTB taxonomy and even for CAC categories, Megan was able to assign more than 70% of the reads uh, to CAC category when you are using annotary based files. So this was nice. So again, we can say like annotary perform as well, if not slightly better than NCBI and RN and strongly outperform the CAC uh, functional classification. So assignment quality, like as we know, quantity is not equal to quality. And uh, quality of taxonomical and functional alignments uh, were compared in read wise manner. So what we found like they were usually similar. So we looked into following cases. For any data set or read set we use, uh, we, uh, took, we carried out like, uh, so we already did this meganization. So we try to see where this read is being assigned to uh, in both the runs. So if a read I is assigned only in NO3 run and it didn't get assigned in NCBI NR run, so it is known as a singular assignment. So it is specific, like it, it's basically assigned to NO3 run or specific to NO3 run. 
same taxon when a read is assigned to similar taxonomical category in both the runs. Like this read is being assigned to same uh, bacterial uh, genus in both the runs. So it's like same taxon assigned, even if um, like same taxon assigned, uh, whether you use NO3 or whether you use NCA and R based files. Different taxons, same lineage. Uh, so when a read I is being assigned uh, to a longer taxonomical path in one run, and the taxonomical path of the alternative run is completely covered. Uh, then we say different taxon, but same lineage. As you can see, like till family level, both of them have same taxonomical, or uh, basically have both both of them have same taxonomy. So NCBI NRN is complete, uh, like read assignment in NCBI NRN is completely covered in the NO3. So yeah, so it's it, like uh, it's it's different taxon, but same lineage. And different taxon and different lineage, like read is completely being assigned to different um, bacteria in both the runs. So like not um, none of the levels, like even the higher level like phylums are similar. So we say different taxon and different lineage. So plot over here basically shows you the detailed assignment of reads to NCBI taxonomy. And on the x-axis, we have proportion of read assigned reads. And on the x -axis, on the y-axis, we basically have data sets. So as you can see in total, like to the NCBI NR taxonomy, um, more than 40% of the read have similar taxonomy assigned to it, whether you use NCBI NR based file or whether you use NO3 based file. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, green color basically shows you that like read only got assigned in uh, NO3 run. And over here gray shows you like that, that, and that proportion of read only got assigned in NCBI NR run. And this uh, like uh, khaki color over here basically show like in dotted bracket, dotted uh, pattern shows you the percentage of mismatch. It's around 5% uh, of the read were totally assigned to different text or and different language. So uh, then now like GTB is, is a well-established taxonomy now. And so we also look like uh, when we, bin those readings into, into GTDB taxonomy, is um, is there any effect? And it's quite clear. So in total, you can see like more than 60% um, of the reads is being assigned to same taxon uh, in both the runs, uh, whether you use NO3 based file or whether you use NCBA and NR based file. And the proportion of mismatch also decreases. So like uh, NO3 perform quite better for GTDB taxonomies. And now over here, we basically shows you the detail assignment of read to function category like keg. Uh, we see a very high uh, increase uh, over here, like, uh, like a large amount, like around 40% of the reads were only assigned in NO3 run to the keg categories. And also like the percent of, percentage of reads or the proportion of read which have a similar functional category assigned to them is, is quite higher, is, is again around 50%. So why this thing is happening, like, uh, like a larger proportion of read is being assigned only in NO3 run, which never got a CAG ID assigned in NCBA and uh, The answer to this basically lies in database statistics. Uh, as uh, you can see over here, uh, like uh, if you look at the total number of accession present uh, in NO3, or protein entry present in NO3, out of them uh, more than 50, uh, like um, I think 56 million of them have around uh, like keg assignment. But with NR database, a very small proportion of them have a keg ID assignment to it. So uh, the read never got an assignment in NCK NR. So uh, finally, we compared, we carried out the runtime analysis. And over here, we basically report you the CPU times. Uh, we basically use a machine with uh, 28 thread and uh, 504 GB of RAM. And as you can see, like uh, um, the total time taken by Diamond plus Megan pipeline uh, is, is present or like is present over here. And if you look at the ratio, we can say like uh, NO3 run were twice as faster than NCBA and other. So in summary, we can say like NO3 is only the quarter the size of full NCBI NR, have similar alignment and assignment rate. It assigned twice as many read to keg and there was a two-fold speed up. 
So this approach is already out in M systems. And um, if you are really interested in microbiome based analysis by using Diamond Plus Megan Pipeline, so you can download the data over here and carry it out, carry out your runs. Further, like uh, uh, so, Diamond Plus Megan Pipeline, the default output is uh, DAA files. Uh, sometime, like uh, uh, not uh, like sometimes these DAA files can be quite bigger in size. Also, like sometimes like uh, we do this uh, diamond base alignments uh, on a server, and uh, then we basically even carried out meganization at server. So the one drawback of Megan was like, uh, you should have all these files locally present so that you can open them in, in GUI. But uh, like with Megan server, you don't have to do this thing. So files can be present on your high-end server. You don't need to download them. Uh, since like, uh, as, as I already said, like DA or like this alignments files can be very big. It can take a lot of space of your laptops and all. So just, uh, uh, place them or put them wherever they are, like um, in your computation servers, and just fire Megan server over there. Uh, it will uh, load your like um, uh, Megan files, uh, like uh, through through uh, REST API, uh, and you can access that uh, like uh, Megan server instance on your laptop. So like they will be uh, provided um, by uh, by the RESTful API to your laptop, and you can use them or you can access them. And then you can carry it, carry out as many indices which are available in Megan. So this approach is also like uh, out this year in um, bioinformatics, and you can read more about it over here. It also has a very extensive manual. Uh, and here's a video like how you can uh, fire up Megan server. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like uh, so we have files present in an in-house uh, like an in-house computer. And we fired up Megan server already there. So there is a Megan server instance, which is already running over there. So once you have loaded them on your server, then you can just start your Megan. And uh, like you can go to the file menu and basically select open from server. You can add your server credential over here. So this is a guest instance which any one of you can access, and then it will load up all the files present, or like uh, which are being hosted by Megan server instance, and then you can carry out as many analyses you want. So it will load all your classifications and everything. It also have an API based framework uh, which you can use to uh, like uh, access this file or analyze this file by using any programming language. Yeah, so as I told, like Megan comes with a lot of uh, n number of features right now, and you can explore and as many you want. So. Then uh, in general, like uh, I would like to thank you all uh, uh, like for listening to this talk. And I would really like to acknowledge all my uh, lab members, especially my supervisor, like um, it's because of him, like uh, all these things are possible. And, like um, like he, he helped us a lot. And also when one like with whom I work on a lot of machine learning projects and all the remaining lab members, like Banu, Timon, and Monica, also my, uh, tech committee member, Professor Rutli and Boris Major, and um, all the collaborators we have. And really, I would like to thank all of my master's uh, students. Uh, uh, they have given more than 100% of them. Without them, like this project uh, will not be like in the current shape they are, or and also to the like Denby and Pinak for the computation uh, like framework so that we can carry out all this analysis. Thank you.